Hello aquatic enthusiasts! Today, we're diving into an exciting challenge. Breeding green lobsters carrying eggs in an artificial glass tank. This female green lobster I acquired is carrying thousands of tiny eggs under her belly, firmly attached to her swimming legs. Our goal is to monitor the egg incubation process, the hatching of larvae, and raising them into healthy juvenile lobsters. But in this confined artificial environment, will the eggs hatch successfully? Or will we face disasters from diseases and unstable conditions? The outcome could be a swarm of baby lobsters swimming freely, or a heartbreaking failure. Join me on this journey full of surprises from a miniature ocean. Time lapse of tank setup, feeding, water testing, close ups of the lobster eating and moving, dynamic background music with bubble sounds. Starting the journey, I carefully set up the glass tank. Artificial seawater is maintained at a salinity of 30 to 35 ppt. The tank bottom is lined with coral sand and live rocks, creating hiding spaces that mimic the natural habitat. I release the egg-carrying female lobster, along with a male for potential support, though the eggs are already fertilized. Green lobster eggs are orange-red, clinging tightly under the mother's belly. I feed fresh live food, small shrimp, chopped squid, blood clams, and mixed fish, ground for easier consumption. everything goes smoothly at first. The mother swims calmly, using her swimmerettes to fan water and oxygenate the eggs. But challenges arise. In the second week, some eggs turn gray, a sign of fungal infection caused by slightly dirty water. I immediately replace 30% of the water and add vitamin C to the food to boost immunity. Then a dramatic event occurs. The male lobster suddenly attacks the female over food. Their claws clash, and a few eggs fall off. I quickly separate them using a net, creating individual spaces. Fortunately, the mother is not seriously injured. Her shell soon begins to harden and brighten, strengthening her defense as she protects the eggs. By weeks 3-4 the eggs visibly develop. They grow larger, and tiny black dots, larval eyes, appear. The diet becomes more varied, including green mussels and snails to replenish nutrients. An interesting change occurs. The mother eats less, devoting most of her energy to fanning water over the eggs like a devoted parent. Then comes a serious crisis. Black gill disease appears due to a temporary drop in oxygen levels. The gills darken, and breathing becomes labored. I immediately increase aeration and give her a diluted formalin bath for five minutes, saving her just in time. We've been watching her closely. The key to successful breeding here is patience and maintaining stable water parameters. On the 28th night, the decisive moment arrives. The eggs begin to hatch. Thousands of transparent, leaf-like philosoma larvae burst free, filling the tank. This is a true battle for survival. The larvae require special food, brine shrimp and microalgae, but many perish almost immediately due to low oxygen or being pulled into the filtration system. Exhausted after spawning, the mother suddenly becomes aggressive and eats some of her own larvae. I act fast, isolating the larvae into a separate tank with clean water, dim lighting, and constant feeding. A dramatic transformation unfolds as the larvae pass through multiple stages, slowly resembling miniature lobsters. Yet the survival rate is only 10%. Then another threat strikes, white fungal disease spreads rapidly. I administer antifungal treatment and increase water circulation, barely managing to control the outbreak. At the most intense moment, only a few dozen larvae remain, tiny warriors fighting relentlessly against death. The final result is unexpected. From thousands of eggs, only 20 baby lobsters survive and grow into juveniles after two months. A quiet success amidst great loss. These tiny survivors offer hope for the future of the ecosystem. The lesson is clear. Breeding egg-carrying green lobsters in a glass tank demands deep knowledge, a stable environment, and unwavering perseverance. This is more than a hobby. It is a small contribution to conserving a rare marine species. Thank you for watching. Try it yourself and share your experiences.